Are All you ready right. for it? Yes. Let's, Let's do, do it. some more questions. John? John, you're in the moderator seat. What do you have for us? Yeah, so this question uh, is, how do I get started contributing with Flutter? If I want to actually work on oh. the framework, how do, I, how do I get started contributing? That's a good question to that hear. That is how a really good question. In fact, I am so glad that you asked. As someone who uh, contributes to the framework yes, personally, yes, go for it, um, yeah. And <clears throat> First of all, every time I see a first time contributor, I am so excited. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the most thrilling moments ever. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to roll out the welcome wagon as digitally as possible with mm -hmm. emojis and everything, because um, everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome that to is, contribute yeah, to Flutter. Sometimes people are like afraid to yes. try and contribute. They're worried that yes. like, someone's going to code review their stuff and be like, well, this is awful mm -hmm. code. Why and, would you trouble us with this? And, 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 I, and I felt that way too. It can be a bit daunting you know, the first time that you go around GitHub and, and you consider contributing contributing to an open source project. And so uh, I'm here to tell you that you can do it. Um, if you look at our wiki, maybe we can pull yeah. it up. We do have a contributor's guide yeah. that kind of gives you the how to set up your environment and how to find something to work on when you first oh my goodness. Uh, look at potential things to submit a pull request for. Um, my personal favorite, what's near and dear to me, is working on documentation changes. It takes away the fear of oh gosh I don't want to I don't want to break anything I don't you know I don't want to you know dip my toe into the water and and make a big mistake uh, so working on uh, some of our documentation like submitting a little bit of sample code or something like that is not only a great way to get started it's a great way to learn and it also helps other people learn and contribute to the project as well so check true. it out yeah that the docs and, and tests mm -hmm. you want to test to something. Tests People are, are love always you. great. <laughs> tests are wonderful. Yeah, you never have enough tests. That's something that I'm sure the engineering team is always happy to see somebody being like, oh, there's not enough tests for this. Let me, let me do a little work on that. So yeah, um, there's a contributor's guide on the wiki. You can check that out. It'll help you get your machine set up and things like that. And again, Flutter is a safe space. We, are, we have a, a code of conduct for code reviews and everything like that. If you show up and you're really putting effort in, people will welcome you and mm -hmm. they'll be very happy to have you. We so. can't wait to see you, so yeah. check it out. All right, John? What else? Yes, yeah, so we've gotten a lot of questions about whether I should be using Visual Studio Code or Android Studio. <laughs> Are we going to come out with Flutter Studio? So what's what's the deal with IDEs? <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, Are we, do we want to get into this Thunderdome? Well, we can, yeah, we can cover it because we, we just announced a whole bunch of other tools that now suddenly integrate with Flutter and, mm -hmm. and can generate Flutter code. Um, so you know, one of the four pillars of Flutter is openness, uh, and that that applies to a lot of things, including the tools that we we integrate with. So. Mm -hmm. Flutter has three fully, fully supported IDEs. There's uh, Android Studio, there's IntelliJ IDEA, which is the one that I personally use, and Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are significant numbers of people using all three of those. Uh, they're all supported by the Flutter team. We have people working on those plugins and adding features to them and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Um, Flutter itself and the language server uh, that provides like analysis messages and stuff like that, though, they're open too. You can hook them up to something like VI or Emacs there are folks in the engineering team, like Hans is a dedicated Emacs user. Yes, he's, yes. He's, I've never seen somebody move so fast. <laughs> I actually uh, use two of them. I oh use, yeah? Uh, yeah, I use Visual Studio Code when I'm working on like a sample or trying to identify what's going on in a bug. Um, and the actual framework code, I work on it in Android Studio. So I switch okay. back and forth. And I don't know why, <laughs> but it, what, what's really great is the fact that it works in both. And you know, rather than having one dedicated IDE, you know, it, it's whatever you like best. <laughs> yeah, and if you if you work in some other editor that you wish worked with Flutter, I bet you can find other people that work in that and you could just start working on a plugin with them, you know? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you have, John? What's next? Yeah, so this question is from Mayor G on Twitter and the question is coming from the San Francisco Bay Area. The question is, can Dart be compiled to WebAssembly? What about WebAssembly? Oh. So web assembly. web assembly. We just had that talk on uh, web. Yeah, and that was about Skia compiled to WebAssembly, mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. I believe. So uh, let's see. So right now, pure Dart code cannot be compiled to WebAssembly itself. That's not something that it's able to do. I think the garbage collection isn't quite the same, and they're still working on it or something like that. Uh, if you are looking for better performance, though, from a Dart application, uh, the Canvas Kit experiment that they're working on right now um, and if you just saw Fairhot's talk, you, you saw him talk about it, um, that provides a significant speed update using a WebAssembly compiled version of Skia, the graphics library. So if that's interesting to you, that's definitely something to look into. Um, and it is, it is very performant. <laughs> <laughs> the, first time, the first time I saw it, I thought they were running it as a desktop app. Um, it oh, was wow, really? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so 
Um, but yeah, there you go. What else do you have for us, John? Yeah, so this question is from Jeffrey Liu on Twitter. Uh, the question is around how to record a video of a widget. So is there a way to record a video of a widget? Oh, wow. So to record, record a video. I know how to take a screenshot of a widget. Yeah, yeah, and I know that there are some devices that do provide screen recording. I think that um, iOS certainly does have a feature that will screen record for you. Um, so, but if you don't have an, I, I'm not sure, I'm not as familiar with Android, to be well, honest. I, so I have the good fortune of working with Greg Spencer, who mm -hmm. is the engineer that does a lot of the tooling for Flutter's documentation. So mm -hmm. you may have gone to Flutter's docs, and sometimes there'll be all manner of things embedded in there to try to give you a better idea of, of what the widget does. And I remember seeing in the curves library, they have videos of curves. Yes. And these are, uh, if we go into the laptop, um, you can actually run these and see, you know, if you put a curve on an animation, what does that curve look like? Mm -hmm. You know, I hadn't, you know, you don't necessarily know what bounce in, bounce out looks like until you actually see it. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe this so was actually recorded uh, using an open source script that Greg wrote, uh, so that we could create these sort of demos for uh, our references. It's a uh, assets for API docs. Oh, you, you yeah. on the engineering team. Um, okay. Yeah, and and this is and this is open source, so you can take a look at it. And there's also instructions on how to use it, um, and lots of examples of how we've used it, because all of our examples that you'll see in our API documentation have been generated by this script, and occasionally we will just run them all over again just to make sure that they're all up to date and they all match spec. Um, so I encourage you to check it out, and if you like it, feel free to use it. Uh, it's very handy, um, and yeah. Oh my, there's a lot yeah, of Yeah, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot, yeah. Um, yeah, so, as with everything with Flutter, it's it's all open source. You can always go look at the code. Um, there's a package in here. Ooh, diagrams. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot going on there. It's like a two image. So I've, I've actually talked to Greg about this before, but it was a while back. I think this is it. Take snapshot, and what he does mm -hmm. is repeatedly take snapshots, and then uses a tool to sort of merge them together into a video. Mm -hmm. So um, that's definitely something that you can look into. Again, it's. This is one of the nice things about open source. You can check this out, publish your own version of widget 2 MPEG or something like that, and, uh, and make a little community for yourself.